Saygıdeğer akademisyenlerimiz Sayın Fahri Başkonsolos'um, geleceğin meslekleri için sahip olunması gereken beceri ve yetkinlikler konulu etkinliğimize hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Değerli konuklar, şimdi sahneye Detroit Mission Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Fahri Başkonsolosu, Turkish Resource Center CEO'su ve Mission State Üniversitesi eski rektör danışmanı Sayın Nurten Ural'ı sunumlarını yapmak üzere sahneye davet ediyorum. Şimdi bunu nasıl yapacağım? Ha, tamam. Teşekkürler. Merhabalar. Aa, bu sunumu İngilizce yapacağım. Uh, ben Nurten Ural. Uh, my name is Nurten Ural. And uh, I was born in Turkey, but at the age of three, my whole family moved to the United States. Uh, so... I am more American than Turkish, but I love my country, Turkey. For 32 years, I'm an interior designer by trade and by education. I had my own company for 32 years. And then I decided 10, 12 years ago that I want to do something between uh, America and Turkey. So that's what I started doing. And uh, we have exchanges as far as education, uh, business, and also culture differences. So in 2004, I became the Honorary Consul General in um, Detroit for Turkey. And in the United States, there's six of us. There's eight uh, career consul generals. And also in 2012, I started Turkish Resource Center which is now a nonprofit organization in the United States. So we do connections with Turkey and the United States. We bring delegations from the United States here and bring delegations from uh, Turkey to the United States to help them, whether it's academically, uh, business, or culturally. And Euro is a number of different companies that we do international connections, as well as tours to uh, Turkey from uh, the United States. Uh, we all probably know that many people in the United States don't know much about Turkey, and what they do know is mostly uh, negative. So in order to uh, change that, I think the best way is to bring them here in Turkey And whenever we do bring delegations here, um, everybody falls in love with Turkey. So I found this to be true. So the more people we bring, I think the more uh, they know about Turkey and they uh, love Turkey. So, uh, but my presentation here is going to be about skills and competencies one must have for future professions. This is really important for universities, schools, students, and also companies to uh, think about these uh, because we have a very vast changing world as we all have experienced. So in about 10 years time, there is a uh, highly likely that many people will be working at a job that doesn't exist yet. The changes in the workplace are evolving quickly, which means one has to figure out how to prepare for the future. And this is not yet an easy to predict how to prepare. Uh, but 50% of us will need to reskill. And the next five years as the disruption of the economic impacts of the pandemic and increasing automation transforming jobs takes hold. So uh, in a report, the World Economic Forum report, it says that uh, there will be about 85 million jobs that will be displaced. 
Uh, and the good news is there will be about 97 million that will emerge new. So we all know technology is taking over, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, uh, and the 5G wireless network and other technology These are providing us with the machine capabilities never before possible. So new industry and roles will be created while others will be antiquated. For most people, learning new skills, building and existing competencies will be necessary to stay competitive in this technological environment. Just as a sample, Congressman uh, Don Bayers, he's 72 years old. Do you hear me? Can everybody hear me? That's okay. Thank you. Uh, he felt that he needed to reskill himself, so he's going back to school to learn about artificial intelligence technology. Uh, so I think a lot of us will need to do this. So we know that COVID-19, the pandemic, had exhilarated. Uh, a lot of the changes made to some of our jobs. Uh, people learn to work remote. Students learn to come on. Students uh, learn to study online classes. Uh, educators learn to teach online, and most of us do our shopping online. So to keep up with these changes, business leaders are looking for future skills and jobs. Today, we can focus on uh, soft skills, such as leadership, uh, time management, critical thinking, problem solving, and fast learning. Hard skills for the future revolve around digital literacy, data analysis, and data visualization. These skills are bound to be digitization, increasing automation of work processes, and declining specific job roles. So these are the 10 uh, skills that the World Economic Forum uh, had listed, uh, and the type of skills are problem solving, self-management, working with people, technology use and development. And we'll go into more detail in this a little bit later. So I want to share with you my experiences of the changing world. Uh, many of you are much younger than I am. Uh, but there has been very fast changes in our life lifetimes. For example, communication. We used to uh, have, we used to communicate news with newspapers, uh, and I remember uh, when we had, were in the United States, my parents used to order like Hurriyet uh, newspaper from Turkey, and it used to probably take like two, three uh, weeks or a month to get to them, and other families would order different newspapers, and we would go to our clubhouse and exchange newspapers, and we used to read the news probably a few months old, but that's the way we knew what the news was. Then, of course, the radio started giving news, uh, and then television, uh, and now we get the news instantly from our phones. Uh, the television, of course, I remember in the 70s coming to Turkey uh, to my grandmother's and uncle's house, and uh, they were the only ones in the neighborhood. My uncle was the only ones in the neighborhood that had a little black and white TV. And the whole neighborhood every night would gather in my uncle's house to watch television. And I remember the most popular thing was not the shows, but the commercials that they gave. Uh, and of course, the evolution of uh, the mobile phones. Uh, I remember my, buying my first mobile phone, I think it was in the 80s, which was the first one here, but it came in a 
box with the battery inside, so you carry this big box with you. And mostly used in uh, the cars. And of course, the uh, mobile phones had evolved where the Galaxy uh, Samsung phone, the foldables, now that's all I use is that. So you get your news there, you have your whole life there, your contacts there, your phone numbers, your documents, etc. So it's come a long ways. And of course, evolution of the television uh, from the little TV, black and white TVs to wide screens. And now we're looking at headsets to see the unreal worlds. The uh, evolution of the computer, uh, I myself as an interior designer, I remember I had started my business in the 80s and we used to do design for computer rooms. And the computer rooms were probably half this size room. And I remember you have to build a certain floor where all the cables go in. The room had to be uh, a certain temperature. Uh, so it started from that to, of course, the A computers, which were the small, um, box computers here. I remember when I first started my business, I bought uh, like 10 of these, and they were probably very expensive, $15,000, $20,000 each. Uh, and then a few years later, uh, they were obsolete. So I remember taking these computers and throwing them in the garbage, and I was crying because I kind of spent my whole life savings just to get computers. Uh, and of course now, uh, most of us use laptops uh, to do all our work, uh, or our little phones are now computers. 3D printing, of course, is becoming very popular now. Now you can do almost anything with a 3D printer, such as build cars, homes, uh, tools, etc. So these are some of the homes that are built in 3D. And of course, holograms. We're all hearing uh, about holograms. We uh, can design uh, with holograms, such as anything to uh, buildings, also uh, heat with holograms. For example, the medical field is very getting into teaching uh, with education and also uh, like a car design, as you can see here, or having concerts with people that have passed away that you could do with holograms. The metaverse, we're all hearing about metaverse these days. Of course, it's the unreal world that you can experience through headsets, et cetera, or which I don't understand, but people are buying real estate in metaverse, actually paying money to get real estate in metaverse. Uh, so a lot of changes that we are seeing now and we are going to see uh, in the future. Robots, we all know RDD2, robot, which we, as a, kid, a child, we saw on television, but robots are becoming reality. And some of the reality is, for example, in the United States, Amazon is delivering packages with drones. The uh, other picture, that's a robot that delivers, uh, this is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, that delivers your uh, food that you order and you get it with a robot. This is a uh, autonomous bus. It's a, a from Adestec and they came to the United States, the first autonomous bus in the United States. And that's kind of a robot. So it goes around campus um, without a driver driving it. And then the last one is a hotel that delivers your uh, room 
service with the robot. And I don't know if anybody has been, gone to uh, the Amazon Go stores. What these are is these are markets that you go in, you uh, get anything you want, and walk out. You don't have to pay, go to a cashier and pay. Uh, it, when you go in, you have your Amazon card that you put in, and they have cameras that sees what you buy and then invoices you after you buy everything. You don't have to deal with people or anything. <laughs> uh, speaking of technology, sometimes your phones talk to you when they, you don't want them to. <laughs> and of course, the smart homes. Uh, during COVID time, I moved from uh, one house to another house. And of course, I wasn't used to staying at home. So I decided, OK. I'm going to make my house a smart home. So I spent a lot of time making my house a smart home. So now I can take my phone and see who is around my house, see if somebody d rings the doorbell. I can answer that doorbell from Turkey to the United States. I can turn on lights and turn off lights. I can start my uh, washing machine or my coffee maker or my oven with a touch of a phone. Um, if a thief comes and is peeking through, the cameras will see it and alert. Uh, the police will be called. So a lot of new technology in the smart homes. And I don't know if you remember the Jetsons cartoon. Uh, so in this cartoon, which was my favorite cartoon, it, they drove in this little helicopter looking uh, space where they went out of space. Even their dog had one. So now it's a reality. This is eJet, a project that I'm working on. So basically what it will be is like an Uber. You call it, it comes and lands on your driveway. It doesn't need much room to land. It'll land right there. You get in from Detroit. You can go to Chicago for an appointment. It'll take you there in one hour, where it takes four hours to drive, and bring you back. So these are being built already. And I think within a few years' time, you will see these up in the air. <laughs> OK. So with all these changes that we are, are seeing that are rapidly changing our world, we need to have skills for our changing world. Uh, and I'm going to go through these quickly. Uh, so we'll go through the 10 skills that the World Forum uh, report indicates. And then I added a couple myself. So analytical thinking and innovation. And I'm not going to go through these real detailed. This presentation is available to you uh, in Turkish and English. Uh, we'd be happy to provide it for you. So analytical thinking and innovation is very important. So uh, employers will look for employees get, that can think analytically. Uh, and that has innovation skills. Active learning and learning strategies. We were, lear uh, we were talking earlier about this. How does universities teach? And how do students learn these new skills? So uh, there's a number of different ways to learn skills. Uh, for example, like note taking, uh, by doing. Uh, et cetera. Uh, and most importantly, we today talked about Taisad and, of course, Gebze University uh, partnering to teach a lot of these skills. You can go into industry and learn skills where also the uh, companies will benefit from students who can teach the companies some things. Critical thinking is very important, and analysis of this. So uh, 
people who think critically and can solve problems is what companies are looking for. Um, so creativity, originality, and initiative. Uh, companies are looking for people who are creative, uh, who uh, have original uh, ideas uh, instead of copying ideas and taking the initiative to do this. Uh, I think in the past, we used to have companies that there were bosses that demanded what for you to do something and told you how to do it. Now I think it's you have to take the initiative, look at the company, take the initiative to see what the problems are and uh, come up with the solutions. Leadership and social influence. Uh, now, leadership does not mean that you're a leader and you demand your employees to do things. So a leadership is by showing uh, your employees how to uh, do things by doing and uh, leading uh, not only a team but working together with 18. And social influence, of course, we're all affected by social media. Your influence on social media is very important these days. If an employer uh, is interviewing you, they always look at social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, what you're doing. So that's very important of how you base your skills and uh, communicate your skills. Technology use, monitoring, and control. Technology is taking over all of our industry, not only industry, but healthcare, any job you do, technology is going to be important. And of course, technology design and programming. I mean, you can be a doctor in your uh, field, but you're going to need to know uh, technology even in medicine uh, because we're now seeing robots performing surgeries uh, as well uh, or any other field. Accounting, you have your software, uh, architecture. Myself being an uh, interior designer, we used to draw on draft boards with a straight edge and triangle. And any 3D projects, we used to have to do it ourselves in painting and things like that. Now that's not even being used. It's all done on the computer and you could design a facility and it'll automatically come up in 3D uh, uh, position, show you 3D. And also you can change colors, you can change textures, uh, so it's very well advanced. Resilience, stress tolerance, and flexibility. These are very uh, important skills, especially we have experienced uh, in the recent past. Um, so we need to teach ourselves how to be resilient in times that are difficult and be able to adapt to those difficulties, as well as stress tolerance. Uh, everybody gets stressed in their uh, work lives, also their personal lives, but you need to learn to control that stress, come through it, analyze it, and then uh, come up with a solution and um, be less stressed. So, and flexibility, we all know that we need to be flexible. For example, when COVID hit, we all needed to be flexible in tolerating uh, staying home, learning online, etc. Reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. Of course, these are things that we need to do in our personal lives as well as our work lives is uh, looking at uh, what the situation is, analyzing it, and coming up with uh, solutions to solve it. Communication, this is one that I have added 
Uh, and I think communication is very important because you have to be able to communicate anything, actually, uh, any of your jobs. Uh, someone can be the best mathematician or the best scientist, but if you can't communicate that, nobody's going to know. Self-management. Self-management, we all know, is very important. We need to be able to uh, set goals, and these goals have to be smart, uh, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. So if you, for example, every week I sit down, usually Sunday night, and write my goals for the week. And I always ask myself, is this a specific goal that I can achieve that is measurable? And what is the priority on the list? And when I should finish the specific tasks? So we need to do this in our personal lives as well as our work lives, as well as students uh, trying to achieve your uh, work or homework or your tasks. And self-confidence. Self-confidence is very important. Uh, self-confidence can be uh, taught to yourself or by education. Uh, when we're self-confident, we can do much better in anything we do in our personal lives as well as uh, professional lives. That's the end of my presentation, and thank you. Thank you for the organizers here, and uh, thank you for all of you being here, uh, taking time out of your busy schedules, I'm sure. Yes, yes. I will take questions, so please feel free. Okay. Sunumları. Electrical automobiles, 
Yes, 30 years ago you still needed these skills, but they weren't as important. I mean, they were important, but they weren't as fact-changing as it is now. So we need to realize that in a couple of years, we're going to need to know about computers. We're going to need to know about robots. Uh, for example, the medical field that I uh, had mentioned, the medical field has been around for thousands of years, but there weren't robots doing surgery at that time. Uh, so it's changing. You know, in the, pa in the past, we saw fax machines, of course. We were saying, oh, wow, how can you fax something from one place to the other and get, you know, pictures? But now we're seeing, you know, different things. So yes, you're right. These skills were needed then, but it's more needed now than ever before, and it's resolving much, much faster. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Sunumları için Fahri Başkonsolos Sayın Nurten Ural'a teşekkür ediyoruz. Ayrıca sunumu organize eden Taysat Yönetim Kurulu Başkan Yardımcısı Sayın Berke Ercan'a da teşekkür ediyoruz. Saygıdeğer konuklar sunumumuz burada bitmiştir. Teşekkürler.